This week on Machinery PTV, track tractors are the hot ticket items on this Minnesota auction, showcasing both a row track and quad track from Case IH. Jaycox Implement is making the best out of a challenging year, and this tractor collector honors his grandfather with a classic Farmall 400. Your machinery is a serious investment, and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Peak TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Pete, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Hey folks, welcome to Machinery Pete TV. Kind of a special show for you today out here in Southwest Minnesota. We're at the first ever Jaycox Implement on-site dealer auction. And today on the show, we're solely going to focus on track tractors. Now, they've been pretty hot the last 18, 18 to 24 months, so we'll see if that trend continues. But before we do, we've got to go back and catch up on the latest farm equipment news. Thanks, Pete. I'm Clinton Griffiths. All of those Chinese ag buys we've been telling you about are starting to add up. Take a look at these graphics from the American Farm Bureau Federation first. This one showing U.S. ag exports to China year to date. It shows they're up 30% year over year, now just shy of $10 billion. Chief Economist John Newton then projecting that out, saying China needs to buy $5.3 billion worth per month from September to December to meet its phase one goals. Now, earlier last week, you'll remember USDA Secretary Sonny Perdue said he wasn't sure if China was going to make it, but that they were trying. Remember the locust swarms in India earlier this year. The U.S. working with African nations now to prevent similar issues in that part of the world. Kip Tom, the U.S. ambassador to U.N. food agencies, says they're working with NOAA to track wind and weather patterns. They're also gathering NASA data in order to understand soil types and soil moisture content, which could lead to a better understanding of where these locusts lay eggs. They're also empowering people with mobile phones giving them a geotag location to go and make an inspection to see if the locusts are there and then take a picture. That picture can then be sent to an aerial applicator that will come and apply the pesticides. There's a new record holder in the blueberry world. According to the Guinness World Records, this Oz Blueberry is officially the largest berry ever certified. It comes in at 16.2 grams, a full three and a half grams heavier than the previous record holder. The very big blueberry wasn't just the heaviest, it's also more than twice the diameter of the average size blueberry of the same variety. Now this berry was raised by the Nature Select Breeding Program in Wabinga, Australia, and the farmers there say they're trying to grow low chill evergreen blueberry varieties. They say larger blueberries happen to be a result of their natural selection process. Let's check on some recent auctions from around the country. Hey folks, don't touch that dial. Coming up, we're gonna watch this 2014 KSH Tiger 580 quad track cell. It's got 2140 hours on it. Shop machinerypeat.com and you may be qualified to receive a $25 Visa gift card or a limited edition machinery Pete hat for free. Go to machinerypeat.com now and check out Shop and Score to learn more. All right, folks, I don't think we've uh, featured a row track before on Machine Repeat TV, but we got a nice one today, a 15 model, a Magnum 340, 2014 hours on it. Now, the last two 2015 models I've seen sold at auction recently, one sold in Arkansas, just over 1,800 hours, went for 130,000 bucks. 
and one here in Minnesota, again, just over 1,800 hours, went for 135, 400. Hornet now 30, Hey folks, I'm with Chaz Wheeler with Wheeler Auctions and Real Estate. Now Chaz, you guys have been busy. You're always busy. Well, we try to be. But you had a big sale on your lot in Paris. Was it a week ago Saturday? That's right. A week ago tomorrow. You set a record. Okay. On the 93 John Deere 7800. High. <laughs> high. Oh, okay. All your okay. sales, okay. Chaz. All right. But uh, gosh, that thing only had 360 hours yeah, on it. Yeah. That brought was 86,000. Yes, sir. Yeah. The tractor came from. Uh, the Warning family at Palmyra, Missouri, and they had bought it after the 93 flood and ran it one year, and Mr. Warning put it in the shed and just wouldn't let anybody run it unless you get it out and charge the battery and warm the oil. So he kind of, he had an eye on it 25 plus years ago, kind of as an investment? I, you know, I, I haven't really dug into that much, but you would have to think so, yeah. I think at 86K, it was 5,000 over the previous high I'd ever seen. Gosh, you guys must have had so many calls on that thing in advance. It, it, it attracted a lot of attention, you know, and, and being a two-wheel drive, you know, was, was sp surprisingly that it did. But uh, yeah. uh, a family bought it and going to put it on a hay baler, and um, nice. they have an older, an older fellow that runs their hay baler, and okay. he says, when, I'm, when this tractor's done, I'll be done. So, so they plan to uh, use it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to work. Isn't it surprising the number of times a, a tractor like that, super low hours? People assume it's headed to a museum, but right, right. it's just... Well, it is. And um, I, I was mentioning to you earlier, we went, visited this uh, uh, antique tractor collection yeah. out here at Lakeland last night. And a lot of those tractors they use every day. And right. so, you know, they're, they're really classic tractors and you think, You'd be scared to death to take them to the field, but they still use them. So, well, it's uh, and, and what does a new one cost? That's exactly a huge right. Huge factor. That's right. right. Well, folks, earlier this year, I saw a pair of 2014 Case IH uh, Steiger 580 quad tracks sold on Minnesota auctions, both with just over 2,000 hours. One had 2,013 hours, went for 229, and another one with 2,729 hours sold for 205,600 bucks. Now, on the auction today, a 14 model with 2,140 hours. 100 and a quarter, 100 and a half, 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 100 and a Sold it. 
Machinery Pete TV brought to you by Ag Direct. For simple, fast, and flexible equipment financing, ask for Ag Direct. Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPete.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPete.com. Hey folks, I'm here with Chad Jaycox, president of Jaycox Implement here in southwest Minnesota. Now Chad, we're at your Worthington, Minnesota store for the auction today here in southwest Minnesota. Uh, let's talk about 2020. Maybe even let's reel that back. I heard a story that coming off a challenging 2019, you maybe had a little party? Yeah, this year we decided to do something different. We, we would always have like a customer appreciation day back at the store. And uh, we decided to have something a little bit different, and we called it Kick 2019 in the Ass Party. So we invited all of our customers and spouses in, and we had a great event. And uh, thought 2020 was going to be a, just a super year compared to the last couple of years. And wow. now we're in 2020, and we're not so sure that uh, it was the right thing to do. But for, I guess for one thing, our, our crop for 2020 is looking super. It went in in perfect conditions, and we've had adequate moisture throughout the year. So we have a great crop in the works and just all the other outside yeah. things that are happening that are making it a little bit challenging this year. Now on the topic of the other, obviously this stuff that nobody could predict, you just have to deal with it as a dealer and your customers. What, how has it been out here March, April, May when the pandemic was unfolding? Uh, what was that like as a dealer? For us, it's uh, being an essential business. It, it's been pretty much business as usual, but we've definitely seen the foot traffic go down and uh, even the, even the work in the shop was was a little bit slow, so that kind of led to us putting some of our manpower to, to clearing out our, our warehouses, and that led to all the pallets of items that we have on the auction today. So there's they, stuff that we've been on the shelves for years, and we, we thought instead of throwing them away, we'd, we'd see if we can give someone a good deal on it. And, but otherwise, it, it's been it's been okay, just just a different world today. Welcome back to Tractor Tales, folks. This week, it's for you Farmall fans as we check out a classic 400. Carl Payne purchased this 1955 Farmall a few years ago. His grandfather owned two just like this, so having another 400 back on the farm was a blessing. It's a uh, Farmall 400. That tractor's near and dear to my heart. My grandfather bought two new ones in 55. Well, I was probably 10 years old when I started driving them. Eight foot disc and roller, they think it's child abuse today, but <laughs> we loved it, and Grandpa loved it, and uh, he he spent a lot of hours with me on it, went to the field with me and stuff, and and that's all I've done all my life is farm. It's going to my other granddaughter. She's turned 16 in another year, and she wants this tractor, so it's gonna be hers. Well, it means a lot. I like to go to plow days and stuff, and I take this tractor and drive it. I drive it on parades, take it to shows. It, it uh, reminds me of him and the uh, farm. It's all, he, was, he loved the farm, and I do too. Yes, it's been completely restored. Oil leaks, uh, it's been overhauled, uh, new paint job, and uh, newer tars. Tars are getting more again, but uh, it's because they use it on it. We still use it around on the farm. Those uh, front weights, uh, they're, they're called frame rates, weights. They're hard to come by. I was lucky to pick up a set. You just can't hardly find them. And uh, so I had them on another tractor and I sold it, so I put them on this tractor, so keep them in use. And, uh, and plowing, it helps to have some weights to hold it down. 
Stay with us folks, coming up our feature item on the show today, this John Deere 9570RX track tractor, 1,048 hours with a lot of warranty left. Got equipment to sell privately but tired of scams and hassles? Visit MachineRepeat.com and click Sell Mine. MachineRepeat.com, the simple and secure way to buy and sell equipment online. Well, folks, our Track Tractor episode winds up with our feature item on the show today. This John Deere 9570RX got 1,048 hours on it. It does have extended powertrain warranty out to October of 22 or 1,500 hours. Now, just less than four months ago, just south of here, down into northwest Iowa, we saw a 2016 model with 1,126 hours on it, sold for 310,000 bucks. Uh, two and three quarter half, uh, two and a quarter to take. Uh, two hundred and fifty pound loaded, two forty five to fifty here, now fifty there, now two hundred and fifty. Uh, two and a quarter now fifty, and two hundred and fifty pound loaded, now thirty five, thirty five, two thirty forty. Uh, two thirty, two forty, uh, two thirty now forty now, forty now fifty here, now two hundred and fifty pound loaded, now two fifty. Uh, two forty, fifty, sixty, uh, two fifty now sixty. Uh, two hundred and fifty pound loaded, now sixty now, loaded on the line, fifty five, now sixty. Uh, two fifty, five, two hundred and sixty. Uh, two fifty, five, here now sixty. Uh, two hundred and fifty pound All right, folks, our feature item, the 2016 John Deere 9570RX, 1,048 hours on it, sells for $267.5. And to me, that's a strong price. Now, let me tell you why. Because right now, the average dealer advertised price on a 16 model 9570RX is $357,220. And for 20 years, I've had this thing, the machine repeat ratio, the average auction price versus the average dealer ad price, about 73%. If you do the math here, that comes out to 260,771 and again a little over that today at 2675 Hey folks, big thank you for supporting our machinerepeat.com website and business. We've really been growing and I need to introduce you here. This is my nephew Max Peterson, otherwise known as Max Pete. Max, you've been out covering some auctions for us. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, yeah, it's been fun. And you, now, that auction you were up in northwest Wisconsin, uh, that had some really nice equipment on it, didn't it? Yeah, it was a farm retirement auction with, for Tim and Jody Whiff, and it was Bearing Auctioneering Company put it on, and it was, it was a good time. There's some good stuff on the sale. Yeah, there were a couple of tractors in particular, that uh, 2014 John Deere 8270R, that must have had people buzzing at the sale, I bet. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of bidding action on that one, so it was, it was cool. And that one actually came in, I think, Max, it was the highest I've ever seen, 189000 bucks. The previous high was like 187500 but that was five years ago, also in Wisconsin. Now, there was one other tractor on that Wisconsin auction. What was that again? It was a John Deere 4455, and it had 6,467 hours on it. And that thing, two-wheel drive, really sharp, 92 model. I think it brought 46000 bucks. I think that's like... Ten thousand bucks over the average. Uh, what was the what was the vibe, the atmosphere like at that sale? It was good. Everybody was kind of it was kind of tight in there, and everyone was there's a lot of active bidders, and it was fun to watch. Yeah, they'll come out for that clean equipment, won't they? Yep, for sure. So, folks, keep an eye out for Max Pete at local auctions. He's helping us on the YouTube side of things, and thank you for your support of our MachineRepeat.com business. Well, folks, thanks for joining me this week in my home state of Minnesota. Really fun to be out here for Jaycox Implements Dealer Reduction Auction in Worthington, southwest corner of the state. Now, I hope you enjoyed our track tractor episode. I couldn't get them to put tracks on that little farm all cub. Otherwise, everything was tracks. And I tell you what, tune in next week, folks. 
We'll have more surprises for you waiting here on Machine Repeat TV. Machine Repeat thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com.